January traditionally is a difficult market and that's an out of the box answer. And I want to try and give a little bit of rationale behind it. So if we go from last year, there was 70 million spent, give or take. But we know it was middle of a pandemic, match the income was down due to lockdown. There was broadcasting rebates. And unfortunately, clubs did not have the security to be able to say, we're guaranteed X amount in this year so we can then invest. So liquidity was a question. And January in general is a reactive market. So if you think about big name players, right? Let's go with um, when Fernando Torres went to Chelsea from, from Liverpool, it was 2011, I think. Mm. In that January, is Carlo Ancelotti signed him. Fernando Torres obviously played a lot of games and was very successful. Then signed for Chelsea, unfortunately, didn't go his way. But the logic is at that time, Chelsea were sixth. They're fighting for European spots. And five months later, the manager, Carlo Ancelotti, is fired. Look at the move to Suarez. The big name Suarez moved. Same summer transfer window. Liverpool lost Torres, had the money from, from um, Torres' sale, then said we need to replace him. So then Suarez, Andy Carroll. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, 2018, I think it was in January. Arsenal were sitting in sixth. They were six points off second at that time. So you're thinking it's justifying that investment because we can then break into that top four and access the Champions League finance. But if we flip that to now, unfortunately for me, Arsenal are still in sixth, but there's a 12 point gap between them and second now. So justifying another 60 million pound investment from a pure economic standpoint has more risk because your access to that top four, the probability is getting less and less because the polarization, that gaps are further occurring. What about the other end of the Premier League? What's going through the minds of the clubs that are currently threatened with relegation? Might think they need to invest to stay up, but obviously need to weigh up the fact that if they do go down, could be stuck with players on huge Premier League wages and not able to afford them. Yes, it's certainly a case-by-case basis. Um, we've talked about currently, let's say Newcastle. Newcastle, it's widely reported their new takeover. And they just mentioned they have a transfer coming through with Bruno Gamares, which would be incredible if they get that. Each of those clubs should have a relegation clause, which means that if they get relegated, a percentage comes down. Mm. If you're trying to get a player who's a hot ticket, a lot of clubs are trying to fight him, and you're saying, I'm going to pay you 100,000, but there's a 30% relegation clause comes into 70. If you're that player's agent or that player's representative, you would say, okay, if you want to bring it from 100,000 to 70, if we get relegated, we want a salary of 110 to offset that risk. So it's on a case by case basis. And that's why this Chris Wood transfer, I thought was absolutely a masterstroke. You're weakening your immediate relegation rivals. You know someone is in the league and you're automatically improving your probability of staying up because you're decreasing the performance and increasing their probability of going down. So I think it's a really, really interesting move. But to answer your question entirely, January is a reactive window. And when, when reactivity happens, it's generally a lot more rash and less successful. So it's on a case by case basis. Do you have the deep pockets? Are you committed to the strategy? And if so, then you can finance. If not, you might take your medicine, go down to the championship, benefit from the parachute payment and move again. Big ask to consider that though, isn't it? That you would just accept relegation if you thought you could find some way through the conundrum to actually stay up.